Today we're speaking with Dr. Robert Weinberg, a founding member of the Whitehead Institute for Biomedical Research and professor of biology at MIT. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Could you begin by giving a little background on the role of epithelial mesenchymal transition in cancer development? Well, there are two major types of cells in the body. Uh, the epithelial cells that make the coverings of skin and the lining of the intestine and the lungs and so forth and the breast ducts. And there are mesenchymal cells, and those cells sit underneath and represent the support structure. The epithelial cells generally sit still. The cells underneath are constantly burrowing around because they're motile, they can move around, and they're invasive. We've discovered recently that epithelial cancer cells, that is breast carcinoma cells, often undergo a change from being epithelial to becoming mesenchymal. That is, they lose their epithelial traits and where they're just sitting still, and they become mesenchymal and they start burrowing and invading. And this change, sometimes called the epithelial mesenchymal transition, or EMT, empowers these cancer cells to become very aggressive and even metastatic. So we believe it's an important part of the progression of benign cancer cells to a highly aggressive state. And can you summarize the key points of your presentation? I described the fact that the EMT uh, is present in early embryos, normal embryos, and that cancer cells often acquire multiple traits of high-grade malignancy by resurrecting or turning on a long, silent, early embryonic program, that is the EMT, which is normally only operative early in embryogenesis and during wound healing in the adult. And by accessing this complex program, this complex EMT program, cancer cells acquire multiple traits that enable them to invade nearby tissues, to move through the blood system, actually to leave the blood system, and found micrometastases, small deposits of metastatic cells in distant sites in the body. So many of the steps of what's called the invasion metastasis cascade that lead in the end to the formation of macroscopic metastases are accomplished by cancer cells simply by turning on this early embryonic program. And what are the clinical implications? The clinical implications are manifold. Uh, for one thing, one can begin to understand what was previously thought to be an extraordinarily complex process in terms of a small number of central regulators. These are called transcription factors, which act as master choreographers of the EMT. One can use them in diagnostics in, in order to be able to determine in advance whether a cancer will or will not become aggressive subsequently. And possibly in the future, it might be possible to prevent the functioning of some of these EMT-inducing transcription factors, and therefore it might become possible to revert a, an aggressively malignant cell back to a far more benign phenotype. Moreover, as I talked about in my presentation, the EMT produces cells that have many of the properties of stem cells. In the context of a breast cancer, a non-stem cell that can become a cancer stem cell which has the powers to self-renew itself, which means that it has the power to move throughout the body, and once it lands in a distant tissue, to spawn a large number of descendant cells that in aggregate form a metastasis, which can often become life-threatening. And how do you see these, um, these results helping to change the practice or the cancer research arena? The connection between the EMT and cancer stem cells seems to be an important one. It enables one now experimentally to create cancer stem cells at will, and in turn, one can begin to screen for drug compounds that are able to kill preferentially cancer stem cells. That might on its own represent a very useful therapeutic modality, but in addition, evidence I presented suggests that in the future, in order to get a durable treatment of a cancer, one will need to eradicate both the cancer stem cells and the non-stem cells that coexist with it within a single mammary tumor. And what are the next steps for the research? The next steps for the research involve uh, a description of which ones of these EMT-inducing regulators are active in different kinds of cancers, describing exactly what they do to convey invasive and metastatic properties on carcinoma cells, exactly how they're turned on by cancer cells, and exactly how they create the stem cells which have the potential of seeding distant metastases. There are still major questions that remain to be answered. Dr. Weinberg, thank you very much.